Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel and to another episode in my sketchbook sessions video series. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how you can paint a beautiful snowy mountain landscape using watercolors. So anyway guys, let's get into it. For this episode I'm going to be using a reference image that I took on my recent holiday in Andorra. So this was just of some of the snowy mountains that I seen whilst in a coach travelling to the top of the mountains. I'm going to be starting off by doing the sketch outline and I'm just going to be doing a few lines to indicate the basic shapes of the three mountains and I'm just using a watercolour pencil to do this. I'm using the navy blue watercolour pencil as this best suits the colour scheme that I'm going to be using but really you can use any pencil, any graphite pencil as well that you want. Just keep your sketch nice and light. I'm then going to go in and start to work on the sky first and I'm going to be using the wet on wet method so I'm just going in with a little bit of clean water on my brush and just pre-wetting the whole of the sky. I'm mixing in some Payne's grey and some brighter blues and I'm going to start to add this in and I'm even adding in a bit of purple actually and I'm going to tap this into that wet area for the sky and I'm going to start to create the basic look of clouds painting in some more shadows going horizontally just to get a bit of variety in there and I'm even leaving some areas slightly lighter to create the look of more light coming through in between the clouds. I'm then intensifying the sky even more at getting in those shadows with some darker paint that has less water mixed into it. And if you want to create some fluffy looking clouds then you can use tissue like I'm doing here to create the look and to create the shape of clouds. I'm also tapping in a bit of purple just to make it a bit more interesting. Now whilst that dries I'm going to go in with my Molotol masking fluid pen which I am loving using lately. I've been using this for near enough every painting I've been doing and I'm going to use this to start to get in some of the highlights so that I can preserve them because I was really scared when doing this that I would paint over all of the brightest areas and it would be hard to get them back up so I decided it would just be easier to go in with masking fluid. You don't have to use this pen, you can use masking fluid in a bottle and apply it with a brush if you want but it's just really good because you can be sure and your mind can be at peace knowing that you're not going to add watercolour to these areas so you'll know for sure that these areas are going to stay nice and white. So to do this I'm just looking at the reference and I'm identifying all of the brightest areas of the mountains and I just applied that blue masking fluid to those highlights. Once the masking fluid has dried, you can go in and start to work on your first layer of shading on the mountains. I used that same colour mixture that I did for the sky, but I added a lot more water to make it really light. And I just basically get in all of the shadows that I can see on the mountains. It's important to look at how the mountains are sloping, how steep are they, before you go in and add your shadows. And try to pick out where the shadows are the darkest. Slowly I'm adding more paint to the mixture so that it's got less water in it to get in some of those darker values and I'm very slow and careful as I do this because I don't want to make anything too dark because the majority of the mountains are white and even the shadows aren't really dark. For the shadows in the mountain I am actually using a bit of the wet on wet technique because I am adding lighter washes of shading to the shadows on the mountain and then I do drop in darker colours and drop in some darker shadows as you'll see in a minute and it will bleed out into those lighter washes. So now you'll see that I've got some really dark paint and I'm just going to dot it into that already wet first layer and it will bleed out and give a really nice soft shadow. And I'm only using this really dark paint for the darkest areas of the mountains, the darkest shadows. So it's important that you don't add this everywhere. I also use the technique where I make sure my brush is really dry, barely any paint on it and I use the texture of the paper to help create this little look of, it's kind of like 
foliage, very dark foliage and little trees and sort of dirt on the ground that you could see. And that dry brushing technique really helps to create that texture that I'm going for. Once again, I'm just continuing to build up shadows and even a little bit of detail further towards the front of the mountain. And once I've finished getting in all of the shadows, I'm going to move on to adding a second layer to the sky. So I'm going in with water again and I'm just pre-wetting the whole surface of the sky. And I just wanted to darken this up a bit more and soften it out as well. So I'm going in with the same colours just with darker shades and I'm just going to intensify the sky even more. I really just want to darken it up and I didn't really like the effects that I was getting with the tissue. I wanted it to be a bit softer and more blurred out instead. But if you like the tissue effect then keep that. And I'm using a lot more of the Payne's Grey in with my mixture to get a really nice dark look. Now if you want to create some really soft natural highlights you can go in with a clean and damp brush and just use that to lift up the paint. Now once that layer has completely dry you can go in with a tea towel or a cloth and this is really good and helpful when removing the masking fluid because it can make your fingers quite sore if you have to rub away a lot of masking fluid. And you can see that all our highlights were really nice and preserved and we didn't have to worry about them. Now before we move on to the next step, if you do want to see how I created this full painting in real time, then it is available over on my Patreon, as well as lots of other watercolour tutorials. So on my Patreon, I've currently got over 300 real time tutorials, all with full narration. I also offer the reference images, the sketch outlines and a full materials list so that you really can follow along with me as I create the pieces myself. And I don't only have tutorials for watercolours, I also have lots of tutorials for charcoal and colour pencil as well as other mediums. So for just a small amount per month, you'll get instant access to all of those tutorials plus new tutorials I upload every single month month. I'll leave a link at the top of the description if you're interested in that. Now let's move back onto the painting. So I let that layer completely dry and I'm going in and I'm just darkening up the shading even more and darkening up the values on the mountains. So to do this have a lot less water in your paint, mainly I'm mixing in black and purple into the paint, I'm not adding too much blue in at the moment and I'm creating a lot of little details as well that I can see on the mountain and to do this I'm just going really in little lines and little dashes that are going with the slopes and angled with the curvature of the slopes and how steep the slopes are. So I'm also adding some little lines at the front here to create the little bits of dead grass and the little branches that we can see. It's important to add in these little details but you want to make sure the whole painting is completely dry before you add in any crisp details. And I'm also just getting in some really like glazing in a light wash of purple just to add in a bit more saturation to the mountains as well before I go in and just continue to add in a lot more details. Really there's not too many steps to this painting, it's just about adding lots of layers and working on it slowly and building up to those darker values. But really you don't have to include too much detail into the mountain because a lot of it is very bright, but you do need to get in those darker values and for me I just wanted to do that slowly. So at the moment I am really focusing on getting in those details, when I'm working on the mountains my lines are mainly going in the little vertical lines but further towards the front where it's a lot flatter I'm doing the little details more horizontally. And once again I'm just adding a little more purple especially over those darker shadows, I'm glazing it over previous layers of shadow that we've added in. So already you can see how this is coming together but I wasn't completely happy with the sky still so I wanted to build up another layer on top of the sky. So once again I wet the whole area and you might still be happy with how you did it in the first layer so this is completely optional and I just wanted to darken it up even more. I added in more purple tones and a lot more paints grey into the shadows and once again I just used a clean damp brush, not too much water on my brush at all otherwise you'll get that strange cauliflower effect which is not what I'm going for in this painting. 
Now to finish this off, I'm going to be using my Winsor & Newton Designers Gouache to add in some highlights. I want to create a starry snowy effect into the sky and I just wanted to top off the mountain with a bit of highlight in certain areas and to create mainly more texture because we have got a lot of highlights. So I'm just adding a little bit of highlights to the peaks of the mountains, to the top and I'm also adding it a bit further down the front to create some little details as well. I didn't mix in much water with my gouache at all because I wanted it to be very bright and opaque. I'm also tapping in a little bit of gouache into the background and I'm spraying onto, I'm spraying my flat sort of water brush pen. It's very wide and it's got flat bristles. So I just sprayed on some gouache onto the background to give that snowy effect. I'm just finishing off by neatening around the edges, darkening it up just to give more contrast. But that is pretty much it for this painting. I really hope you enjoyed following along and watching as I created this painting. So once again, I'm just finishing off by removing the washi tape once it's completely dry to help prevent warping. And I will also date this painting just because I wanna know when I created it. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you've got any suggestions for future sort of sketchbook session episodes, what you'd like to see me create, then let me know in the comment section below. But thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new around here. And even tick that bell icon so you do get notified on my future videos. But that is it from me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye everybody.